Hi, I'm Pierce Jens with Baratza Support. Today I'm going to walk through cleaning out and really unclogging the Encore Grinder. This process also works for the Virtuoso, Preciso, Maestro, and Maestro Plus. Before we get into the actual cleaning and getting your grinder back into operation, I want to help you better understand why this happens and what exactly is happening so you can avoid ever having to do this again. And to do that, I actually have a bit of a cutaway part that I want to show to you. I wanted to show you guys how this clog happens and why it happens. And to help me do that, I have here in front of us a grinder that has the cover removed. And besides the cover being removed, we actually went in with a bandsaw and cut a big piece out of it so you could see the inner workings. Here's the ring bird that you normally sit in here like so. And when it's grinding coffee, the whole beans get pulled down by this screw shape of the cone burr. It works like a screw to pull the beans down. And then they get cut between the cone burr and the ring burr. They get forced between that small gap between these two burrs. And then you have ground coffee. In the ground coffee, it falls into the bottom of this chamber and actually gets pushed around in a circle by the paddle wheel. So you can see how those paddles go around with the burr when the motor is running. And the paddles push the coffee into this hallway and then it goes through the hallway and falls from the discharge chute down into your bin. And what happens is coffee gets packed in the hallway and prevents anything from going through it. And I simulated that with my cutout here by jamming in a yellow sticky note so you can see where the problem is. The grinder is able to run, it spins around, your paddle wheel tries to push coffee somewhere, but it can't push it in because it's all blocked off with a bunch of coffee that's packed together. And this is what happens when it's clogged. This is why the grinder runs and it sounds totally fine. It's not doing any work. It can't pull any more coffee in because it's all packed in there. Sometimes it sounds loaded down, but most of the time it just sounds like it's running empty of beans. So what we're going to do is grab the cleaning brush that came with the grinder because the handle of this cleaning brush actually fits really nicely into the beginning of this discharge port. This is what we're going to use to clean the grinder out. And what's tricky is you just can't come at it sideways because you have this burr in the way. So we're going to take and put about a 30 degree bend in the brush, about an inch up from the bottom of the handle, about like so. And you'll know it's right when you can fish it in around the burr and get the handle into the hallway to push out your clog. So let's get back to the actual grinder. It's going to take a little bit of imagination because my real grinder is not cut to bits since I've been using it. But that's the one that we need to get back into grinding action. So let's go ahead and clean it out. So I have with us an Encore that's actually clogged. And when the grinder is clogged, the motor will run and the beans will hop around a little bit in the hopper, but it's not going to do any grinding. It even sounds rather normal, it just sounds like it's running empty of beans. So the first step to unclogging the grinder is going to be removing the hopper on the top. Now I was in the middle of a grind when it got clogged on me. So I have some beans in my hopper, and this is actually perfect time to unplug it from the wall. And then I can really get all my beans out of the hopper, and then I'm going to go ahead and rotate the hopper counterclockwise until it stops, remove it. There's even more coffee beans hiding underneath it. We'll pour those out also, take off the gasket and take out the ring burr. And that leaves me with a very clogged grinder. That's the spot to start. We're gonna start with the easy step of cleaning out this burr area. And I'm actually gonna use this mostly as a poker to clean this out. So I'm just gonna poke up and down and loosen the coffee up. And I'm going to try and make this as little of a mess as possible. So I'm going to do this over this lid so I can at least get a lot of it in one spot. So 
So give me another moment here to do some cleaning and what I want to do is get the coffee out until I can see the four pieces of the paddle wheel and I can also see the bottom of the grind chamber. I'm not going to get this perfectly clean because it's just going to get filled back up with coffee when I do my next grind, but I do need it clean enough to be able to do the next grind. So I want to do a close-up shot so I can show you how clean I got my grinder and I also want to, here let me use this as a poker, show you the four paddles of the paddle wheel. These four paddles are what actually put the ground coffee around and out of the burr chamber. So you can see if I spin the cone burr with my hand, how those little paddles go with it and they're pushing coffee around to the bottom of that chamber. So we want to make sure the paddles are in there because if your paddles are broken off or completely worn down for some reason, then it's not going to be able to get ground coffee out of the burr chamber and it, it's going to immediately clog back up if you try to grind again. The paddle wheel should last for around 10 years of daily use. So email our support team if you're not quite getting that amount of life out of it and maybe we can give you some advice on how to get some longer life out of it. So let's go ahead and grab that cleaning brush that we made a little bend in the handle earlier on. We're going to use this handle of the brush actually to clear out the hallway where coffee is plugging up the system. And finding the entrance to that hallway is half the battle, so let me help you do it. Right now the back of the grinder is facing you. We're looking down to the top of it and I have the pulse button over on this side. If you look inside the grinder, there's a black piece of plastic that has a rectangular hole in it that hole is going to be right by your setting of 30. So look in there and find that hole and then look a little bit deeper into the grinder by the burr. Where the entrance of the port is, is all the way down here actually. So the paddles that we were looking at earlier push the ground coffee right into the entrance of this hallway, this discharge port. And I'm going to use the handle of the brush to wiggle and push and route around and see if I can clear the entrance of that hallway out. Now the brush is stiff enough, it works for this, but it's not very sharp. So you can also use something like a poker. I have a 90 degree poker or a hex key. The size doesn't really matter, but I find the smaller ones fit in there, the bigger ones don't. Or just continue to use the brush that came with the grinder. That's what I'm gonna do here. And you're going to have to push and wiggle and get it going. And when you get frustrated from the top, because it can be frustrating, then we're going to go up from the bottom instead. I'm actually going to lay the grinder on its side so you can see a little bit easier. And I'm going to put the brush into the discharge chute and I'm just going to try and dig around and see if I can loosen any coffee up. see look at that coffee coming out so after doing it from the bottom a bit we'll switch back up to the top and let me just rotate this a little bit so I can see what I'm doing and then we'll get we'll go in and out and I'm gonna try using a hex key because it's a little bit more pointy and I think there is so much coffee in here that that round handle is having trouble blowing through it. Oh, you hear it pop in, and look at that. This chunk of coffee just came falling out of the chute because I busted it loose with this hex key. I bet you now I can get the handle of the brush there really well. Oh, yeah. Okay, so... I have a significant amount of the brush put into that little hallway. See after all that cleaning is the handle of the brush coming through the chute. And you can see it in there if you flip the grinder upside down and look closely. And that tells me that there's no more coffee plugging it up because I'm able to get the whole handle of the brush through. So from here, let's go ahead and put this grinder back together and get back to grinding. Now to put it together, I'm first going to grab my ring burr and this red tab goes near the setting of 30 when you're installing it. It sort of settles into place. We'll go ahead and fit the gasket on next. You don't have to stretch it, it just sort of pushes and seats into place. Then we'll grab the whole bean hopper, insert that guy, put it on my grind setting. I was using 20 for drip myself. 
I'm going to put the whole beans back into the hopper. You don't want to re-grind ground coffee because it goes through so fast it can plug the grinder up. But the whole beans that I had left over from earlier, I'm definitely going to reuse. And from here, I can put my lid on the top. So let me actually go dump this ground coffee. And I can put the lid on the top. And let's see how well we did here. Well, I suppose I need to plug it in for that. back to grinding. The grinder's back in action, but I want to talk a little bit about how this happens and how you can prevent it. In my experience, the clogged discharge chute, or that little hallway, is caused by grinding frozen beans, grinding too much coffee so your bin gets too full, holding a portafilter right up against that discharge chute and grinding into it. Um, grinding rice really can take your paddle wheel out and you won't get 10 years out of your paddle wheel if you're cleaning it with rice. But overfilling the bin is by and far the most common cause of having a clogged grinder. And you might notice on this Encore that the hopper and the bin don't quite match. And that's because I've been waiting right here till the end to show you a change that we've made to help everyone not overfill their bin. And the change is we now have the bin clear like we do on the hopper on this grinder and we've added a fill line and you'll notice that the fill line is about two-thirds of the way up the bin it's not at the top and that's because when coffee is falling out of your discharge chute into the bottom it's falling into a single spot and you end up with your pile of coffee looking like that and when your bin seems to be this full the tip of that pile of coffee actually can be at the top of the bin and that's what's going to cause your clock if that tip gets all the way up to the discharge chute then the discharge chute has some pressure in it and it gets packed full of coffee and we're back to the beginning of the video. So this is something that we have available on our parts page and the new grinders are shipped with that I just wanted you to be aware of. Thanks for watching and I hope you're back to grinding.